Today's video is going to feature makeovers from a group of dolls that I got at the very end of August 2021. They were from mostly the 60s and we got them in a really beat up zipper case that was like a hat box style and it was pretty disgusting. The dolls clearly needed work. There were moldy cat crunchies in this bin and a lot of broken dolls, dolls that looked scary because they were so neglected and they were quite the exciting project. I did not film me going through the lot because it was sort of an afterthought to pick up the camera, but I hope you enjoyed what I did manage to capture. So let's get into the transformation. So I'm undressing the dolls and sorting all of their clothes into a laundry tub. I actually have two different laundry tubs because there were quite a few red items and these clothes were mainly from the 60s and 70s which that era is notorious for bleeding really bad and as it is red items tend to bleed the most. So that's what the smaller container is for on the end and in the middle is just the general laundry of all different colors and I have a bunch of color catchers already in there I put extra in the container with red and then on the far left this is where I put all of the plastic accessories that were included and bits of doll furniture some of the furniture I couldn't soak because they had cardboard backings and then here I'm adding dish soap and a whole scoop of baking soda to soak with the plastic pieces. I usually just put dish soap in with plastic things, but when they're really old or really dirty, the baking soda makes a huge difference. The water actually turned brown when I did that. Um, and then this is a laundry. Because of the age of these items, I not only put in handmade laundry detergent, but I also put in a splash of Gain to help them smell better and OxyClean to brighten everything up. And then while I was letting these dolls soak, because they were so old, they were very stinky, they had a lot of built up grime, and my camera needed to be charged, so I figured I would let them soak in hot water, and then I would get my cabbie going, because I needed to scrub his face down with dish soap and baking soda, but then he needed to go to the laundry. And here I am putting him in a pillowcase. I put a little bit of detergent always directly in the pillowcase just to make sure he gets some. And I put some OxyClean because he had a lot of stains. And then I obviously had other clothes in here with regular detergent. And I put it on the hot water cycle. And now, it was a little while later, I went to scrubbing the dolls. I actually took the newer skippers from 2018 and 19 out while um, I was waiting for my camera to charge and I cleaned them separately because they didn't need to soak but these old dolls it definitely helped I really recommend if your dolls are very old or really grimy it makes your job way easier cleaning them if you let them soak ahead of time that is if you can let them soak you do have to be careful because some dolls will absorb water um, Pepper, Tammy's little sister she had a little hole at the top of her neck and it actually filled with water so I went to put her to dry I could hear water rattling around so I had to make sure to drain her properly so just be aware of that if they have a lot of hollow components give them a good shake and make sure you don't hear water sloshing around and as always I'm using dish soap and baking soda this works miracles even on dolls that are 50 to 60 years old you really don't need to use harsh chemicals these simple products get the job done they can take layers of dirt and grime and years worth of buildup off of them with ease but soaking really does help and I think it also made them smell a bit better I mean they're gonna smell anyways because of how old they are and if you know anything about say 60s Barbies they smell like crayons and such is the case with other dolls from this time they'll have like a particular odor it's very interesting how dolls change smells throughout the years based on how they were made and I did a close-up of Todd because he was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. I'm not going to lie. When we were making the deal on buying the case of dolls, I almost thought of leaving Todd behind because I didn't realize he was Todd. He was that disgusting and scary looking. So he needed a lot of extra attention. And the stuff that was on him was weirdly peeling off. It was like the sticky layer. I don't know if he began to ooze out or what, but it was really disgusting. And I also had to trim the wire sticking out of his leg because it wouldn't go back in. 
And this is the part where I condition and um, detangle their hair. I did wash their hair twice with dish soap while I was doing their bodies. I don't know if um, you noticed me doing that in the fast forwarded footage, but I did. And then I decided to just detangle and condition them all at the same time. Sometimes I divide it out that way because it goes easier doing an assembly line rather than doing one doll completely. And this is the boil wash. Yes, you can boil wash dolls from the 60s. A lot of people are afraid to do things with 60s dolls because they are so old, but their hair boil wash is just fine. It's still going to be coarse because that's just the nature of the fiber that was used, but you can get a really massive improvement. I would just recommend boil washing them like saran hair, putting them in hot water and leaving them to sit for a while. And as always, I'm rinsing them with cold water and I'm putting tons of diluted gel in on their hair, on the top, and on the bottom because this is really going to help manage their unruly tresses. I'm not sure why, but the guinea pigs were screaming for food or something. When I came home, there was this big truck across the street at my neighbor's. They're taking down trees. I think they're the dead trees from the gypsy moth infestation years ago. But you can see that I had to give them grass because as soon as I came in the front door, they were all gathered together screaming. Won't you? Why do you associate tree cutting with getting fed? Hmm? So obviously Todd had this gnarly green mark on his face. I used um, Hair Developer 30 Volume, not mixed with bleach or anything, to apply to this stain because it would lift faster. I've experienced green ear with one of my bubble cuts many, many years ago, and while the regular OxyClean face wash did take it out, she had to be outside for like 10 days, and we don't have great sun right now, so I just decided to give him the stronger stuff. And then afterwards, I had to fix Skipper's leg. It looked like it was coming out of its socket, so I used this little screwdriver to shove all of the vinyl that had kind of come untucked or rubber whatever the material her leg is back into the slot i tried to use a comb then i decided to use a slightly bigger screwdriver so that way it wouldn't poke holes in her rubber and um that worked really well it just took me a few minutes to get it all tucked back into place i think it probably got stuck um because sometimes their legs lock up with age and when someone tried to move it it caused the the rubber to tear so I had to make sure everything was right where it would was supposed to be. And then I took this flexible glue. You can get it at places like Walmart. Mine's the Loctite brand. It's made for things that are supposed to be flexible. I've used it to fix sneakers, but most of the time I use it to fix tears in doll necks and rubber. And I had to elastic band them in place to keep the rips together or else they would have come undone. The glue wouldn't have done anything. And then I had to fix my Charlie's Angel doll. She had a broken leg, but it wasn't actually broken off. It simply fell out because her hip joint cracked open. So I lubricated everything with baby oil to make it easier. And then you're going to see me take a flathead screwdriver and kind of pop her seam open. And that way I can get her leg fixed. I'm sorry, it kind of went off frame because I was so zoomed in. And then I had to flat iron her hair because the boil wash didn't do much for it and it was nylon so I knew that I would be able to make a difference. And I did something a little different this time. Usually I'll go completely straight but I knew with the way her hair was layered it would look better if I kind of flipped her hair upward to make it that signature like Farrah Fawcett-esque look. And it looked really cute. I did have to trim the very ends of her hair just to get the little frazzly bits completely gone but it was literally just me skimming the edges and then I washed and conditioned her hair and loaded her up with gel after the flat iron I've been doing this as of late and it makes a big difference after you flat iron a doll and then here I had to do an extra stain removal treatment on some of these pieces they actually went in another time that I did off camera but they needed even more oxycline so I just put in a ton of the powder and then some warm water. Yes, if your items are really stained, you do want to use warm water if the soaks in cold water don't do anything because it helps open up the fabric and the stains can come out. And while I was getting that ready, I also got a little bowl with oxyclean and warm water because 
my Cabbage Patch doll, after running through the washing machine, he still had a not nasty stain on his arm, which you'll see in a minute, and I needed to spot treat that. I wasn't sure if it would come out with the first time in the washing machine, so that's why I washed him first. But I scrubbed it in using a toothbrush, and then I let his arm soak in the bowl for a few minutes. And here I am fixing the Charlie's Angel Dolls outfit. It had a lot of little tears, but surprisingly none of the other clothes from this lot needed repairing, which is interesting considering the age. So I was working on uploading some of pictures of these dolls, because um, like the newer skippers are all set, but there's something so weird that I noticed. Do you see how these facial screenings are done? Like a series of little dots. They must be really, really, really small dots because they're not visible like in person to the naked eye. But because I take um, high quality, large format pictures with my camera, when I, I happen to accidentally zoom in on this on Flickr, and you can see all the dots and it's also in her blue all over here. and. I, you can tell it's also in her eyeliner, but I think because black is a more like prominent color, it masks it better. So I went looking through my albums at other dolls from around this time frame, and a lot of them have it. So trippy. I guess they like that's how they put the faces on. Like back in the day, even I think in like the 90s and early 2000s, they were hand painting things. But now they, I thought they were just like spraying stencils on, but this almost looks printed. It's freaky. No wonder why it's so hard to identify dolls these days. So here I'm trimming up some of the loose fibers from my Cabbage Patch doll Picasso's head. This is one of the problems with yarn hair that's really common with age. Some of the little fibers will start to fray at the top and it creates this really like messy look and it honestly made my doll kind of look like Christopher Lloyd in Back to the Future. It was really funny. So I just took a sharp pair of scissors and trimmed off all of the extra and it might look like it went pretty fast in this footage but I probably spent 20 minutes doing this, going through all the little rows and making sure it was as neat as possible. And if you accidentally cut a loop, it's really not a big deal because some Cabbage Patch dolls are sold with the loops cut. It's called like the lion's mane. In this clip, I'm going through all of my sister's skipper clothes to dress Scooter, Skipper, and Pepper. I wasn't sure how Pepper would fit Skipper clothes because she's a little bit bigger, but I was able to find her something. I wanted them to wear fairly era-appropriate clothes because they have very 1960s looks about them, so I thought they'd look kind of weird in modern clothes. And here I'm gluing down a label that came off of a little cat food can. It looks really similar to an Ideal Toys Pepper fashion pack cat food can, but the label is slightly different, so I'm wondering if it was Ideal Toys, but sold with something else. And I just used a toothpick to spread this glue around, and then I had to use some tape to secure the label. Because Jesmar Cabbage Patch dolls have very bad face paint that flakes off. I had to seal him up myself using this gloss sealer that I showed at the beginning of the clip, just to secure it in place. So from this lot, we didn't get many clothes. However, we did get a swimsuit for my bubble cut Barbie, a uh, swirl. swirl ponytail Barbie. It's the same one that my bubble cuts each have. But um, she might look familiar. She's from the Tortured Treasures lot. I rerouted her and all that jazz. And she now has her outfit. Before she was dressed in silk and flame and red flare. The real, like, OG versions, not reproductions. But now she gets her own outfit. She looks lovely. So we have my lovely new Cabbage Patch boy who smells foul. He's actually a Jesmar Cabbage Patch. So that's the factory that made Cabbage Patch dolls in Spain. However, they were released in different parts of the world um, when they weren't supposed to back in 1984, which is how old I believe this guy is based on his butt stamp and little label on his outfit, which this is also tagged Jesmar, so that's really cool. The camera's not really picking up on it, but he is disgusting. He has sand in his lips. He has these disgusting, dirty marks on his hands and feet. 
Most of all, he smells foul. What's interesting too is he's taller than my other Cabbage Patch dolls. Jesmars are the tallest Cabbage Patch, if I'm not mistaken, of the manufactured kind from this era. But he needs some work. So this is him before. And then we have my Jesmar Cabbage Patch doll, who we decided to name Picasso. And um, you can see he does have this little mark here, but um, on the other hand, where there was the big gross stain that I soaked, that is all gone. He looks so much better, and his outfit looks a lot cleaner. He smells way cleaner, and you can see his hair doesn't look nearly as crazy. And um, what's really unique about him are these freckles. This is not a feature that is super common on Coleco Cabbage Patch dolls from the early 80s. And I thought, for comparison, I would show you, like, the Coleco version of this same doll. So this is my guy, Daniel Joseph. And you can see that his eyes are way darker and shinier, whereas Picasso's are way more faded. And I did have to put sealer on them to prevent them from chipping because that's very common on Jesmar dolls. Their, their sealer is very bad. And you can see that he almost looks like he has tear troughs because his eyes are painted well above the socket, whereas Daniel Joseph's are painted right on the socket line. And this is the same head mold. It just looks so different. And then even their hair colors, you can see how much lighter Picasso's hair is. And this is um, Daniel's hair. It's in super nice shape. He has the nicest yarn hair of all my dolls currently. Whereas Picasso's was pretty trashed, and I think in part that's because this yarn isn't as high quality. And this outfit is supposed to be for this, this Coleco one, which I didn't get on Daniel, I just happened to dress him in it. But you can see that the patches are the same, but the dates are different. So this is 84, because Jesmar started producing Cabbage Patch dolls in 84, so you won't find any 83, whereas this one is 83. And the quality of this um, Coleco overall set is way nicer. This is like real denim and these buttons work, whereas this is kind of like fake denim. You can see how much thinner it is. These buttons do not work, so you have to slide the straps over his arms. And then the Velcro is long and skinny, and it's not the best quality. It barely stays closed, whereas um, this guy's shirt velcros and doesn't velcro at all. It has a button on the front. So I just thought that, that was a really interesting comparison. But I absolutely love this little guy. He was such a cool find and he really needed a loving home. We have Tammy's little sister, Pepper. She's the 1965 version. Considering her age, she's really not in a bad condition. Definitely smelly. And then we have Pepper. She actually does fit some skipper clothes. I decided to see if she could fit skipper clothes because then they'd be more era appropriate for her and not as baggy as like regular fashion dolls clothes. And she has the best hair of all of the dolls from this lot. It is so shiny, it almost feels like Saran. And she's just so adorable with her little freckles. She's kind of like Tammy's version of Skipper. I'm pretty sure they represent the same age, but she has these really sweet little freckles. We have Ideal Toys Supergirl. She looks very similar to Misty. Actually, the seller I got this lot from thought she was Misty. Her hair needs some work. It's pretty, pretty gnarly, but considering her age, again, she's not really that bad. This is Supergirl after. She's very unique. I love her eyes and that's why I chose this handmade outfit because I thought the white and the green and blue polka dots would complement her. And her hair cleaned up really nicely. It's very shiny and quite soft for its age. The only thing is she has these little um, broken bits at the front here, but if I trimmed them down she'd have bald spots so I just kind of left those baby hairs. I've done that with some of my Malibu Barbies, but She's looking so much better. Tammy's friend, Misty. My doll's actually on the wrong body. She's supposed to be on this body mold that my Supergirl has. This is actually a grown-up Tammy body. 
I don't know if it was a factory error or if the kid who once owns the owned these dolls body swapped them, but it's close enough where you can't even tell the difference. It was just really the butt markings that gave it away. So she has these really gorgeous red lips. We have Misty. I chose this Tammy fashion because the red knit matches her lipstick. It's not in the best shape, but I think it goes really well on her. And it is super nice. It's so shiny and soft. And this is not like right after I boil washed her. These dolls have been sitting around for over a week um, while I was doing other things before I dressed them and things. So she's been sitting in a basket and her hair still looks really nice. This is a Remco pocketbook doll, doll, a pocketbook doll from the 60s. This is Jan. The shirt is her original. It's actually a dress and she's got her little panties on underneath it. She is so cute. I love her facial screening and again she's not super dirty. I apologize for little flecks of stuff. This case they were in was disgusting. I tried sweeping the floor like three times. And this is Pocketbook Jan after. I did have to wash her outfit twice because some of the black bled a little onto the yellow and it was super dingy from being so old, but it looks so much better now. And she is so cute. I love her head mold and the way her face is painted. I do think my doll has a cut section of hair because the ones I saw online all have like one singular long piece. So, I don't know, maybe she's a variation, but I'm thinking it was cut because it's really hard to find, um, like, unopened pictures of these dolls online. But she's adorable, and I definitely would have loved playing with this doll as a kid. We have Scooter. She is the blonde version of the doll my sister already has. You can see that her face is really dirty. It's also in part because she's discolored a little bit with age. And then we have adorable little Scooter after. I put her in this Chips Ahoy dress. Colleen actually has a few of these. This is one of her first Skipper fashions, but this is one of our nicer versions. Her hair was already so nice looking. You can see it's like pristine. It's very shiny. All the Barbies from this era do have coarse hair, but the boil wash does definitely mean it up and make it look shiny. She's super cute. She has face paint. That's in incredible condition. She is such a gem. Colleen, I'm so glad to have another Scooter. She's one of the cutest friends of Skipper ever made. We have Twist and Turn Skipper. Now, she doesn't look bad, a little greasy, but then you get to her leg. Something's really wrong with her leg. I hope I can fix it because we don't have this exact body in, like, in our morgue where we keep spare doll parts, but we do have 60 Skipper bodies if she needs it. Then we have little twist and turn Skipper. I put her in this pose and play outfit. It's not in the nicest condition. I do have vintage outfits from the 60s that are nicer, but I thought this blue would really pop with her eyes. And you can see that she does still have the crack in her leg where it ripped, but it's all filled in with glue. So she does have a slightly outward stance, but you can, you can get her to stand. It's just, I try to be careful so as not to put stress on this leg so I move it separately on its own but it works. She has a specific body because it's got the bendable legs and the twist and turn waist and we don't have any spares of those in storage. But her face paint is also really beautiful. She's missing a few eyelashes but other than that she's perfect and her hair is gorgeous and shiny and it's actually quite soft. Colleen always wanted this Skipper doll ever since we got into collecting dolls again in 2011. We actually went through a whole kick of buying 60s Barbies. We bought some on eBay, we found some at antique stores, and she bid on Skippers like this so many times on eBay but lost. So this is like a dream come true for her. This is a Charlie's Angels. Yeah, her leg came off. I'm not sure how easy it will be to get back in, but our outfit's actually in this, in this lot. We have Charlie's Angel Sabrina. So this is her hair after I flat ironed it and did little flicks. And her leg is fully reattached so she can stand and sit. Her outfit is somewhat damaged. I had to sew a lot of pieces. Unfortunately, the back side looks really nice, but the front, there was only so much I could do. But I'm really glad to have her outfit anyways because it, um, 
she's this interesting size and I think she's really improved. And then um, we have two newer skippers that are both babysitters ink. This one was sold with a stroller. She is from 2018. She's box dated 2018. And this is Stroller Skipper after. She actually had her purse attached to her before. Um, and this is her hair. She has this really um, layered hairstyle. And it's super shiny. I don't know if the camera is capturing that. But she has pretty much the same facial screening as Bedtime Skipper. But with different styled hair, but it's both Saran. And then this is a 2019 box dated Babysitter's Ink Skipper who was sold with like a little bedtime set. Her hair is really nice considering and her outfit's really cool. This is Bedtime Babysitter's Ink Skipper after. She doesn't look a whole lot different because obviously this doll's not that old. But I love this outfit and her hair is this beautiful saran. Um, Colleen really loves these Babysitter's Ink Skippers. And she didn't know exactly who this doll and the stroller one were when she grabbed them, but we had a feeling that these were their original outfits. And um, I've shown this before, but some of the newer Mattel dolls have these silver codes. And that top number there, um, that one is their stock number. It correlates with their stock number, so that's a good way to identify them. It makes it really easy. Not all of them have that, unfortunately, but it does make it way easier. And that's how we figured out who these dolls were with ease. We have Barbie's little brother Todd. Do you see this filth? This doll is so nasty. His wire is coming out of his leg. I have no clue what melted on him. If maybe that's his um, like plastic seeping. And he's got this big green spot, which I'm not sure if I'll be able to get rid of safely. We'll have to see. Poor little guy. He's foul. Okay, so I'm not fully done with Todd. It's been about a month since I began filming this transformation video. And as you can see, he has this green spot on his face still. And that's because I've been putting him out for stain removal. But because it's now fall, it's cooled off, the sun is not shining very much. I really can't work on him anymore until the spring. Um, one of the questions I've gotten a lot or one of the things I've heard a lot on my stain removal video is people think that sunlight and heat don't make a difference with stain removal. That's not entirely true. While you can get results without the sun shining, the heat from the sun does help the peroxide develop quicker lift things out. That's why if say you get your hair done they always put you under a dryer like to keep your your head hot and also why your roots will process faster than the hair that's away from your scalp because your scalp is generating heat that's why you go back and do the like half inch by your roots last because it'll process quicker. The sun does make a difference. The UV rays do help lift and so does the heat created from the sun. And because of where I live in the world at this time of year, it's just really not worth putting this poor guy out anymore. But it has made a big difference. Um, there's obviously still like a green center, but this whole area was green before. Obviously I'm keeping his body covered and trying to keep his face turned so only this area is in the sun and yes there is a white splotch because uh, he's a mod era doll and the skin color was added after. Most dolls if you put the peroxide on it's not going to discolor their skin at all because they're colored all the way through and even if say there's some blooming or streaking on their ABS plastic you can sand that away but I figured it looked better to have a pale splotch, which is picking up more on camera than it is in person, than having like a big gross green area because, you know, it makes him look like he has a really bad like skin infection. I've been his dermatologist for the past month. So he's clean everywhere else. You can see there's some discoloration on his leg from the wire that's really common on these dolls. I did have to trim out the piece that was sticking out of his leg because it was there was a really large hook on the end and I was afraid to shove it back in and tear his foot so I trimmed that down and then I pushed the little wire that was sticking out 
on the base of my metal lamp to get it pushed in all the way and then I put a little bit of flexible glue in that hole to keep it from coming out and he looks a lot cleaner. I was so scared of him when we met but I absolutely love this guy. He's my favorite from the lot now because I've spent so much time with him and he's just so cute. So he's just gonna hang out in the basket up here in my doll room slash art room so when the weather gets more accommodating I can put him out. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you were interested in seeing pictures of these dolls or their makeovers, feel free to check out my Flickr. It'll be linked down below. Anybody can view those photos. You don't need a Flickr to access it. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.